tonight on the Northwestern News Report. The Chicago Abortion Fund hosts a fundraiser to support the pro-choice movement. What this event means for activists in Illinois. And the cats are celebrating the year of the rabbit. How Northwestern students are ringing in the Lunar New Year. Plus, revolting children. A look behind the scenes of NU's Dolphin Show production of Matilda. All that and more tonight on the Northwestern News Report. It's your news right, right now. now. Hello and welcome to the Northwestern News Report. I'm Diego Ramos Bachara. And I'm Michaela Denault. Some advocates across the country saw the Supreme Court overturning of Roe v. Wade this past summer as a call to action. I went to one event to see how local activists are keeping up their fight for reproductive justice. Activists gathering at Evanston's Firehouse Grill on Sunday, reflecting on the 50 years since the Roe v. Wade ruling, and nearly seven months since Dobbs v. Jackson overturned the case. In the practice where I work at, we've seen about a tripling to quadrupling of our out-of-state patients. In Illinois, elective abortions are illegal up to around 26 weeks of pregnancy, but 13 states had abortion trigger bans, outlawing abortion as soon as the Supreme Court ruled on Dobbs v. Jackson. Here in Evanston and Chicago, we're, we're kind of protected from that, and I just don't want... I think like a main theme of this event is not taking that for granted. A group of local women created the event after expressing similar frustrations over the nationwide impact on reproductive rights. And I was just taken aback and made me think. Raising money for the Chicago Abortion Fund, or CAF, an organization that provides monetary, emotional, and logistical support across the Midwest for CAF. Fundraisers are really, really critical, especially because of how much the volume um, of our work has increased. Speakers sharing hopes or reacting to new abortion restrictions. Some say inequities within reproductive health called them to speak up. I feel like I need to be someone that helps my community and communities that are marginalized that don't always get the care that they so desperately deserve. And at the event at Firehouse Grill, the speakers also shared their own personal stories regarding abortion access in Chicago and Evanston. I have the privilege of caring for an incredible group of patients who have come to me from all over the country to get the care that they need. They shouldn't have to do that. And Representative Jan Schakowsky says the work is not done. We need to be on the scene all the time. The event raised over $5,000 for the Chicago Abortion Fund. Roughly 400 people gathered in the Technological Institute this past weekend to celebrate the Lunar New Year. NNN's Lance Wilhelm takes a look at how students are finding community in the Year of the Rabbit. This year's Lunar New Year comes after two recent attacks on the Asian American community. A mass shooting in a predominantly Asian neighborhood left 10 people dead on Lunar New Year's Eve and an 18-year-old Indiana University student was murdered in a racially motivated attack last week. During Northwestern CESA and CSSA Lunar New Year event on Sunday, it's a time to recognize a love for their community. Just being able to appreciate a different culture, um, traditions of a different culture is very important, and I think that's also important in light of these events that um, we create a sense of community that is very inclusive, that's very diverse and equal. A sense of community is important for both Asian American students and international students celebrating this holiday away from home. We do want them to feel like, you know, home feel like all like New, you know, New Year because like uh, in, in China we actually get a holiday off time, but now here obviously we don't. This year marks the first time that CESA and CSSA were able to collaborate on the Lunar New Year event. This is honestly one of the most important traditions of CESA as well, um, being a new year gala and just being a place, a community for students who are living abroad and cannot go, go back to family. The three hour event included song and dance performances from student groups, raffles with prizes, snacks, and more, all aimed at trying to provide Asian American and international NU students with a sense of belonging. It's always awesome, like having people who share like the same culture, the same food. It's like, it's a great experience to have on like, you know, your traditional holiday. Happy New Year and Gong Si Fa Lance Wilhelm, Northwestern News Network. 
Thank you, Lance, for that touching report. Student workers speaking out, a group of Northwestern Residential Assistants, or RAs, rallying at The Rock on Friday. Their goal, to demand better working conditions. Their demands include fair compensation, RA representation on the Residential Life Committee, anti-discrimination policies, and third-party mental health support. Protesters say these failures center around one issue, residential services not treating their student workers as students and people first. So I think it's well past due that we are given our fair treatment um, and are able to um, work together to achieve those things. So, yeah. Yeah. In a statement to NNN, University spokesperson John Yates says Northwestern offers a wide range of training and support for RAs, and they consistently look for student feedback. And some good news for all you Wildcats fans. The Wildcats men's basketball team beat the Wisconsin Badgers yesterday 66-63 to after two games were postponed because of players testing positive for COVID-19. Now, in an email sent to NNN, Northwestern's Vice President of Operations, Luke Fagora, said, quote, we continue to see relatively few students test positive due to COVID symptoms or report positive test results to us, and that he does not expect to see any updates to COVID policies this quarter. Figura also told NNN that varsity athletes are subject to the same testing policies as all students and that there are no additional requirements. Coming up, Northwestern's color may be purple, but one professor is looking to go green. What a new chemistry project might mean for the environment. And baking for better, how one group of students is baking bread for charity. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. Western University, we are pioneering innovation and achieving excellence across every imaginable discipline. At Northwestern University, the possibilities are endless. Northwestern and the city of Evanston are collaborating on a guaranteed income pilot program. It's an effort to help the community and research future policy recommendations on poverty. The year-long guaranteed income program gives $500 every month to, ran to 150 randomly selected Evanston residents. Participants include 18 to 24-year-olds, senior citizens, and undocumented people living at or below 250% of the poverty line. Recipients can use the money however they see fit. Northwestern donated $400,000 to the program and researchers are currently investigating its impact. Jeffrey Thomas, a School of Education and Social Policy Research Project Manager, says the program makes monetary aid more accessible. So many of the existing services that we have, there's always strings attached. People's lives are complicated. They're gonna need, need money for different needs at different times. Find more information on the Guaranteed Income Program at cityofevanston.org. And one NU chemistry professor is using novel technologies to solve scientific mysteries to help create a more sustainable world. 
And Anand Shravya Pant takes us inside a Northwestern lab looking at how microscopic molecules can lead to macroscopic breakthroughs. It's huge. Like, yeah. But if there actually is something... Purple may be Northwestern's color, but new yeah. chemistry professor Brian Hunter yeah. is researching how to make yeah. our world yeah. more green. Yeah. His lab investigates how to convert fossil fuel-dependent processes to more efficient ones. Moving towards uh, sustainability and, and studying reactions that are important globally for sustainability, that's when I got really excited. Hunter is new to Northwestern, moving his lab from Harvard University this fall. He says the strength of Northwestern's inorganic chemistry program drew him to Evanston. I think that the emphasis on sustainability and nanotechnology uh, was just too good to pass up. The lab uses synthetic techniques to develop materials and fuels in a more energy efficient way. This involves using electrical energy generated from sunlight. Goals include reducing CO2 byproducts and finding less wasteful means of producing hydrogen and ammonia. These are all central to making modern day industrial processes more sustainable. Some way to run these reactions that can be then scaled up for use in industrial applications. Lab work is not the professor's only task. Hunter is juggling research while also teaching undergraduates. It's a type of equilibrium he's never had to deal with before, but it's where he feels most in his element. It really combines two of the things that I love, research and teaching. Whether in his lab coat or at the lecture podium, he says there's always something new. I'm learning a lot from my students as well. Making strides towards a sustainable future in the lab and in the classroom. Shravya Pant, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Rabia. And for those of you interested in sustainability research, reach out to Professor Hunter to discuss undergraduate opportunities in his lab. Now it's time to look under the microscope. We're examining other scientific achievements across campus. Northwestern University unveiled a bioelectronics transmitter last week. The team says it's revolutionary because it will measure different health signs in blood and water. Professor Tobin Marks said it could be used to measure heart rates, sodium levels, and eye motions for those with sleep disorders. And if you hate going to your annual checkup with your doctor, new advice from Feinberg says it might not be necessary. The report says for some routine tests, it would be better to test based on age and risk factors, meaning that not everyone will need every test. Checkups can lead to anxiety, high costs, and the risk of false positives. We'll have more on scientific developments at NU next week. Bookends and Beginnings is having a last call in their speakeasy for books tomorrow night. The store is celebrating the year spent in Bookman's Alley while looking ahead to its future. Now this comes as the alleyway's location is set to close at the end of this week following a rent increase in November. The new location on Orrington is planning on opening in the beginning of February. Susan Davis will be Northwestern's next Vice President for Student Affairs. Northwestern University President Michael Schill announcing last week. A committee of NU students, faculty, and staff selected Davis for the position. She is currently the Senior Vice President for Student Affairs at the University of Virginia. An interim Vice President has held the role since August 1st when Julie Payne Kirchmeier left the position. Back again for winter quarter, one Northwestern student organization is baking up bread for a good cause. And then Alexia Kadota Browner takes us inside the kitchen with Hala for Hunger. Raising awareness of and money for hunger and disaster relief, students gather weekly for Northwestern Hillel's Hala for Hunger. Hala for Hunger is a nonprofit club at Northwestern. Uh, our mission has to do with giving back money to different organizations that help fight food insecurity. Baking challah and selling it to the Northwestern community, 50% of each bake's profits are donated to the National Challah for Hunger cause, Swipe Out Hunger. The remaining 50% goes to The Ark, a nonprofit social service organization supporting Jews in the Chicagoland area. So it is really nice to be both doing something fun and that um, connects to a lot of people's identity, but also is helping a large range of people that exist far beyond uh, the Northwestern community. The bake takes place on Thursdays, so the halas are ready and fresh for Shabbat, which begins on Friday nights. It's really fun to just come and like knead the dough. It's very therapeutic, and it reminds me of baking with my mom at home every week. The bakes always have a supervisor present to ensure the food is kosher. We bake within the Hillel building, which is super convenient because Hillel has a kosher kitchen. Our challah does follow kosher rules for those who observe. The club is known for their casual and collaborative environment. Sometimes we have bakes that are just 
you know, once we get the holla in, we sit and chat with each other and it's super casual. It makes it a really low commitment, fun club that doesn't ever really cause too much stress for members to come. Although the group is run through Hillel, Holla for Hunger is open to all students who wish to participate. Alexia Kadota browner Northwestern News Network. If you want to know more or get involved with Holla for Hunger's efforts, check out their Instagram page at NU Holla. It's a birthday celebration on campus. How one NU building is celebrating a milestone. Grab your hat and gloves. I'll tell you more about a winter storm coming to Evanston. Stick around because there's no place like the Northwestern News Report. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. and achieving excellence across every imaginable discipline. At Northwestern University, the possibilities are endless. It was time to celebrate good times in Norris last Thursday in honor of the building's 50th birthday. And then Sabrina Carson invites us to the party. Staff arranging three Norris-themed cakes, a performance from the undertones, and speeches from NU administrators. Northwestern celebrated 50 years of the Norris University Student Center. Student groups, student engagement, all of that is, is symbolized by this 50th anniversary. Celebrating 50 years and two new renovation projects, an expansion of the East Lawn and moving the Norse Starbucks to the ground floor. But the full building redesign announced in 2016. I don't see any immediate future of a, of a replacement or a big expansion. Corbin Smythe is Norris's executive director. He says it is more important to focus on the short-term projects. We look at the incremental changes that have occurred with Norris and our satellite venues over the last 50 years. We're just, we're, we're continuing that work. Deborah Blade, assistant director of Norris, graduated from Northwestern in 1979. It was a very extremely active place. Celebrating its past impact. Just really honors what Norris has provided for this campus for the last 50 years. And its future. One of the most important things that we can do here is to provide opportunities for connection and growth for our students. Connecting students for the last 50 years and many more to come. This new Starbucks is set to open in March of 2023. But what's to happen to the vacancy up on the first floor? Get excited, Northwestern will be opening a new Shake Smart location in fall of 2023. I'm Sabrina Carson with Northwestern News Network. Back to you at the desk. Sabrina Carson at Norris, thanks so very much. There was finally some snow on the beach for the first time in 2023, and it looks like there might be more to come. Here's NNN's Jeremy Fredericks. Jeremy, good evening. 
Good evening, Michaela. Today temperatures hit the mid 30s and we saw some sun. We're expecting some snow to begin overnight into tomorrow. Forecast of three to five inches. By Friday, we're going to see another chance of snow. Temp temperatures are going to cool down. We're expecting about three inches. As we head into the weekend, temperatures cool before we reach the mid teens early next week. With all that snow in the forecast, I went inside the city's public works agency, which is responsible for cleaning the roads during the snow and preparing them before the, before the first flakes fall. Perched inside the command center, Evanston snow coordinator Donald Cornelius works to find the right balance to keep roads running. We just don't want to put salt all over the roadway. We, um, we want to be precise. Monitors show snapshots of streets, temperatures, and tire grip. The real-time updates help Cornelius and Evanston Public Service Bureau Chief Noel Rodriguez make calls on what to use to treat the roads. What we're trying to shoot for is preventing the bonding of uh, snow or ice to the pavement. Evanston has multiple ways to prevent that bonding. There's the traditional kind of salt and brine, a water-salt combination that's environmentally friendly, cheaper, and more effective. Being socially responsible and looking for ways to to reduce the impact that we have on the environment is, is, is tremendous. In what Cornelius calls the bathtub, a ton of salt combines with fresh water to make a thousand gallons of brine. The man who makes the brine emphasizes the preciseness of the salinity level, which is important for the brine to work. So now it's down under the 22.5, so it's recirculating. It's adding water to the tank. Brine limits the amount of salt that runs off into waterways compared to the traditional approach. The fact that you're using less of it, which is why it's, it's better. Besides the 18,000 gallons of brine at the agency, there is a silo of sand. Evanston brining the way to a cleaner winter. Jeremy Fredericks, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Jeremy. While Evanston takes care of the main roads like Sheridan, Northwestern is responsible for sidewalks and internal property. It purchases both salt and brine from the city. Lights, camera, cat -tion. Filming continues this week for one of Northwestern student, for a Northwestern student production's uh, new film, For a Good Cause. NNN's Jonas Blum catches us up with the action. One student group is generating cheers for charity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Applause for a cause producing its 13th annual feature film, Mixed Signals. Three friends, um, Maggie, Trevor, and Cal, go to an Airbnb and they're watching TV and they find a remote that lets them swap places with the characters in the TV shows and hijinks ensue. But it's not just about television drama shenanigans. We're the only philanthropic feature film student group yeah. in the U.S. The charity they're supporting is 826 Chicago, a nonprofit amplifying Chicago youth voices through tutoring and creative writing workshops. Um, so they're just dedicated to helping um, um, kids in Chicago. It's kind of like helping their Steven literary uh, yeah. education. And along with raising funds with the film, we're going to go with them, volunteer with them, and set up like a kind of curriculum. They want us to educate them kind of on what we're doing. While the film may be called Mixed Signals, the charity it supports is crystal clear. We do partner with a lot of um, nonprofits around around Chicago. 826 Chicago works with different organizations to generate new programming and will work with Applause for a Cause to create a workshop. Despite their goofy antics, this group is seriously clapping for others. Jonas Blum, Northwestern News Network. Jonas Blum, thanks so very much. Now, mixed signals will be shown at local movie theaters during the spring quarter, so stay tuned. Have Northwestern theater students been a little naughty lately? A look into NU's Dolphin Show production, Matilda. Stick around. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way.
cheer you all the go. Go you Northwestern, fight for nature, sweet victories, for the fame of our fair name, and go Northwestern, win that game. Northwestern's annual Dolphin Show is the largest student-produced musical in the country. Lena Peterson, di Lena Peterson dives into this year's production of Matilda the Musical. Bringing a story of imagination and rebellion to life on stage, performance is continuing this week for the Dolphin Show's production of Matilda, a beloved children's story. But the message is true even when you grow up. That we all are like little kids and we can all have fun and and that you know people who are different um they shouldn't be excluded from anything the honey sweet themes resonating with the college student team but we as college students are going through the exact same struggles of wanting to be heard wanting to be seen and wanting to be an important part of, of the world we live in for Kristen Wagner, choreographing the show meant finding creative ways for actors to bring themes of joy and community to life. Choreography, um, I wanted to allow people to go back to that time and to find like freedom in movement and joy. The team's collaboration on and off stage, almost like a miracle. You have like a community come together, whether that's on stage or off stage, like in the back and like the business and artistic teams, um, I think Dolphin also tries to create that same sense of community. And for the audience, a night of theater and joy. The set is tremendous. The lights will blow you away and the music will ring true to so many of the childhood memories that you have. And Lena joins us in the studio now with Matilda herself, Morgan Barber. Lena? Thanks, Diego. And Morgan, thank you so much for joining us in the studio tonight. So how were the opening weekend performances of Matilda? They were so great. Um, we had a 7.30 show on Friday, a 7.30 show on Saturday, and then a matinee at 2 p.m. on Sunday. That was like geared towards the younger audience members, and it was super fun, and it went really well. I'm so glad to hear that. So why do you believe should Northwestern students and also Evanston community members come see the show this weekend? I think you should come see the show this weekend because, I mean, we're going to go out with a bang. We're going to put as much energy and um, fun into it as we possibly can because it's our last two times doing the show. Um, and it's a super fun show. It's about this strong little girl who just wants to enjoy her life as a child. And I think everyone could have fun, whether you're a kid or an adult or a teenager, seeing this show. That's amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. And there are still two more chances to see Matilda this Friday and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Tickets can be purchased at nudolphinshow.org. Now back to you, Diego. Well, thank you so very much, Lena. And there you go. You go see Matilda. You know, I have to say, it's very... On Sunday, I was actually walking by Con Auditorium and there were so many kids and families just really eager to see the show. It was very cute, very wholesome to see everybody so interested in the musical and what this wonderful team this production team has to offer. Yeah, absolutely. I actually got to see the show myself and I loved it. I love the aerial acrobatic performances and I have um, revolting children stuck in my head. I actually played it when we were edit editing stories tonight last night. Ah, so you went from Pitbull to Matilda then. Oh yes. A lot of, oh, yes. lot of, lot of oh, variety. Yes. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into this week's episode of the Northwestern News Report. Stay tuned for an all new Politica at 8 p.m. I'm Diego Ramos Pachara. And I'm Michaela Denault. Have a good night.